In this video, I'm going to walk you through the tree view, that is that list that starts overview, recommendations, ad groups, all of those things. I'm just going to walk through one slide at a time to explain exactly what each of these pages is and what they do so that you know your way around the interface and you start to understand some of this confusing vocabulary and lingo that Google uses. Kiyosaki taught me years and years ago, whenever you want to learn something new, you start by understanding the vocabulary. It doesn't matter if it's real estate investing, Italian or Google Ads. By learning the meanings of about 20, 30 words, you're going to get rid of about 95% of the confusion. So we'll start on the overview screen. Like it says, it's just going to give you an overview of the entire account. The various cards that you see on this page will change over time as Google it likes to sort of basically surface, bring to you the cards that it thinks are going to be the most useful to you in that moment. Next is recommendations. Now, obviously, there aren't any recommendations right now. We don't have any ads running. I'm doing this straight after. So this is, as you will see it, straight after creating that first campaign. So we don't have anything running yet. And of course, Google is going to prompt us to give it a credit card number so that you can start running your ads. Now, the other tab that would normally sit in between recommendations and ad groups is the campaigns tab. Now, you're not going to see that until you've created your second campaign, because right now you only have one campaign and therefore it doesn't need to show you that. In ad groups, well, these are the containers that live inside your campaign. Right now, we just have the one that we set up during that campaign creation process. Again, I'm just doing one here for the brand name of my business. That's where I suggest you start. It's the easiest thing to get right, the hardest thing to mess up. And it's also going to be one of the cheapest keywords that you can ever run. So it's a great place to practice. Over time, you'll add new ad groups using that big blue plus button that you can see there. And you'll add new ad groups, and they're going to hold collections of similar keywords. We'll ignore Auction Insights for now. The next tab is then Ads and Extensions. So we haven't created any ads yet, but when we do, this is where they're going to live. Now, by default, when you're looking at the campaign view, you're going to see all of the ads here that live inside of that whole campaign. If you want to drill deeper, you go back to the Ad Group tab and drill into a particular ad group and then when you come to the ads tab, you're going to see just the ads for that one ad group. So depending on the level that you're looking at, and you can see that level right at the top of the screen next to the logo at the top where it says all campaigns, Demo Search AU. Demo Search AU is the name of this campaign. So that's the level I'm looking at. So if I'm on the ads tab now, I would see all of the ads in that campaign. If I dig into a particular ad group, that's going to change at the top of the screen. It's going to say, let's say, Demo Search AU, and then the ad group would be web savvy. If that's the view I'm looking at, I'm just going to see the ads inside that particular ad group. Now, we haven't set up any ads or extensions yet. Again, I cover those in a later module in Fundamentals, but this is where you'll see it. The next is landing pages. Of course, we don't have any data in here yet, but this will give you a list of all of the pages on your site that you're sending traffic to. That's what Google calls a landing page. You're also going to hear a term final URL and the final URL is essentially the same thing. It's just the URL of the page where that person lands on your website. Next is keywords. Now, there's a couple of tabs under here that we need to worry about. Uh, and there's a very, very important but subtle distinction between search keywords and search terms, which is a couple down on the menu from where we are right now. The keyword is the thing that you control. It's the thing that lives inside your account. In this case, you can see it's the exact match of Web Savvy. Again, just remember those square brackets are uh, something that denote what's called the match type of your keyword. You can see the fourth column along there says match type again. We'll cover match types another time. I'm not going to try and describe too many things in the one video, but this is the list of the keywords inside whatever level you're looking at. So right now at the top of the screen, it says all campaigns, demo search AU. So we're looking at all of the keywords inside that campaign. And just like with ads, we can navigate into a particular ad group and then we'll just see the keywords inside that group. 
The next tab, tab down, I don't have screens for every single one of these, but this is just for the keyword tab. But if you look over on the left hand side, the next one down is negative keywords. Again, described in another video in Ad Fundamentals course, negative keywords are a way to stop our ads showing. And that's where you would go to see the negs that are in this ad group or in this campaign. And then search terms, I said there was an important difference. The search term, or often called the search query, that's what somebody is going to type into Google. And if there is a match, so now match type starts to make more sense. If there is a match between their search term and your keyword, then your ad is likely to show. If your keyword is web savvy, but the search term is dog training, then there isn't a close match. And so your ad isn't going to show. If my keyword is web savvy and the search term is web savvy consulting, then there's a pretty close match. And so then the ad will probably show. And so search terms, that's where you go to see a list of the search terms that the people that have been searching, that's what they have typed in to Google. The keyword is the thing that you control. Auction Insights, again, we'll ignore on this screen, but Auction Insights is just a way where you can see how you have performed versus other advertisers that are going after similar keywords. We can ignore that for the purposes of the fundamentals course. Next, we come to audiences. This is really beyond the scope of Google Ads fundamentals. Uh, it gets a little more complicated, but it is essentially a, an additional way of targeting your Google Ads. So historically, Google Ads has always used keywords and still does use keywords. Uh, every search campaign must, at this point in time, include at least one or more keywords. Audiences is a way of adding some additional targeting data and giving more information to Google and saying, hey, go after these people a bit harder or, or I'm willing to spend more for this group of people. An audience might be people that have been to your website recently, or it could be people that Google have some sort of data around. But again, you can safely ignore that for now. Next, we have demographics and you can see here there's quite a few choices under this section, age, gender, household income, and then you can start to combine all of these things and even exclude people from seeing your ad based on these things. So for example, you could exclude all men from seeing your ad if you know that your product is mainly used by women or you want to market to just women. Age breaks down into about seven different buckets. You can see them on the screen there. Um, generally, it's best when you're starting out, you're gonna show ads to everybody, all ages, all genders, all household incomes. And then as you gather data that shows that one group is better or worse than another, then you can change your bid. That's generally what you're gonna do with this stuff. You're gonna bid more or less for a particular group or even exclude them altogether. But again, safe to ignore this for now, just so that you know that's where that information lives. And then we have our campaign settings. So I've gone through this screen in quite a bit of detail in a different Google Ads fundamentals video. Uh, we've been through that. That's basically summarizing everything that you did during the campaign creation process in the previous video. And of course, there are some additional settings hiding underneath that. Again, the vast majority of those, or in fact, all of those, you can ignore safely for now. Then we come to locations. So this means where physically are your ads going to show? And you can see here, I'm targeting the whole of Australia with this particular campaign. Uh, just as we have with keywords and negative keywords, which is a way of excluding certain people, we can have excluded locations too. So we might, for instance, say, I wanna show ads to the whole of Australia, but exclude the state of New South Wales, for instance. Maybe I've got a, a separate campaign for that, or maybe I can't service people in that particular location. So we're gonna stop certain people seeing our ads. Again, that's probably the next level up and beyond the scope of ads fundamentals. And you can see there's a couple of reports under their geographic report, user location report, safe to ignore for now. Ad schedule, this shows, or a, shows a visual firstly, but also allows you to add a schedule of when you want your ads to show. So for example, the most common use of this would be you can only service people between let's say nine and five, Monday to Friday, and so you only want your ads to show during that time. Now, again, to begin with, you're gonna show ads 24 seven. 
And that's because if somebody is searching for what you've got at 3 a.m. on a Sunday morning, then generally it's best to let them see your ad, click through to your site, and fill out some kind of form. You probably have some sort of lead generation form on your site, some sort of contact us form, or you're selling the actual product itself. And either way, at three o'clock in the morning, people can do that. The only time you really need to worry about this is if your budget is very, very limited, and if you're after phone calls rather than somebody filling out a form. Now, phone calls, are, again, really beyond the scope of this course, but you could have your text ads show 24 seven and just have your phone calls show on a separate schedule just between the times when you're actually manning the phone lines, that's possible as well. So you don't have to constrain your whole campaign just you know Monday to Friday, nine till five. But if you had a strong belief or maybe some data that suggests that that's the best time for you to show ads, this is where you would do that. There are three main categories of device with Google Ads, computers, mobile phones, and tablets. Now, when you start getting into YouTube ads, you, you'll find there's also a fourth one there called TV screens. But for the most part, for now, you can ignore that. Uh, and again, the main thing here is you can bid differently on these different devices. Generally, you will find that people on a desktop computer are going to convert better than people on a mobile phone. Not always the case, but generally speaking, that's true. And so therefore you might choose to bid a little bit lower for people on their mobile phones. Generally with Google Ads, that represents, the traffic is, a, is a roughly a 50-50 split between computers and mobile phones and tablet gets a little bit. Very, very different with Facebook where the vast majority of traffic is on mobile. So if you want to bid differently, Again, beyond the scope of this course, but if you wanted to, that's where you come. And there's a couple of other settings in there that you can ignore for now. Advanced bid adjustments. This is so you can bid more for calls. So you can say to Google, hey, I'm willing to spend more on a phone call than I am for a click coming through to my website. And you can ignore this until such time as you set up call tracking on your site. Change history is exactly that. It shows you a history of not every single thing that you do. There's a few things missing from this report, but the vast majority of changes that you make to a site get recorded and you can filter across the middle of the screen here where you say all changes, ad changes, bid, budget, keyword, audience, network, and status changes. You can click on one of those to filter the report below. Obviously, there's no data there at the moment. And then lastly, drafts and experiments. So the, again, Definitely beyond the scope of this course, something that we go deep into in the Search Mastery course. A, an experiment is a great way of trying different things. Obviously, that might be one bid method against another. For example, testing your manual bidding against one of Google's smart bidding algorithms. Or it might be a completely different way of setting up a campaign and moving from 100 ad groups to five or moving from one big ad group to 10 smaller ad groups. There's all sorts of things that you could use campaign drafts and experiments for way beyond the scope of this course, but just so you know, that's where that lives down at the bottom of the screen. So now you understand why there are what about a dozen different things down the left hand side of the screen, what's called the tree view. And whenever we refer to the tab, that's what I mean. So if I say click on the ads and extensions tab, that's the thing I'm talking about, the thing over on the left hand side of the screen. And sometimes there'll be some you know, uh, sub options underneath each of those. But hopefully now you kind of feel like, OK, I've, I, I know my way around the screen. As you start to gather more data and run more ads, more things will pop up in the account. We'll find later on ways to segment data or dig deeper into the various reports and tools and settings that you can see linked to right at the top of the screen, top right hand corner there. You can see tools and settings and reports. I'm not going to go into that now. It's again beyond the scope of fundamentals. You really don't need to worry about it. The main thing is to get some ads up and running. So hopefully this has helped you do just that.